Hello and welcome to another Bible short action word lesson. Um, today we will be continuing our series on why did they believe. And the person we will focus on today is Zacharias, right? Is this what Zacharias looked like? Um, I highly doubt it, but old man um, Grams look cool, you know, with, with, with his hat. So I decided to use this picture, right? Um, you know, last week we were coming off of Emancipation Week. Um, now we have a character looking like he is probably somewhere from Asia, right? But we are all one human race. So this is our Zacharias representative for today. Now, why did Zacharias believe? So here's the question that we are asking. What caused an old priest to believe in the promise of the Messiah after so many generations of priests had already died waiting for this thing to come to pass, right? What was the reason for his belief? And we are going to go through um, quite a bit of scripture today, right? Um, so... Before we get to that, however, um, let's look at who Zacharias was. And these are just some, some quick points, right? So his name means God remembers. And when you go through the story, if, you're all, if you already know the story, um, you would be able to identify with why he was given this name or how the name had personal significance in his life. He was a priest who had never been chosen to offer incense, right? Now, this was um, a big thing. A priest would only be allowed to do this probably once in his life, right? Um, the priesthood was a large group of people. And the duties of the priest were determined by groups. So you would have like different categories. Um, also, the casting of the lot. So in a sense, you could say it was luck and chance, but these people believed that the lot itself was ordained by God. So it really wasn't luck and chance as much as it was God making his decision on whose appointed time it was to do whatever duty, right? He was an old married man with no children. Um... And again, as we would have, I think we touched on that with Joseph, having children were a big thing, was a big thing um, for the Jews in particular, right? Having children is a big thing in any culture. But remember, this is a people that were waiting for a promised Messiah, right? Um, now, this Messiah... Later on, they would recognize, okay, he would be of the tribe of Judah. These two people were not of that tribe, right? Um, but there were still things that they were looking out for, that only a child, right, a new life could fulfill, because obviously it was not um, their calling to do or to achieve certain things. So they wanted children. They were looking out for children. They had none up to this point. And he and his wife were faithful. And they were both of the tribe of Levi, right? And so the Levites who were called to function in the duties concerning the temple. And they were also of the lineage of Aaron. So they were specifically from the priestly lineage now. So let's get into some scripture. Um, when we looked at Joseph, when we looked at the wise men, we were in the book of Luke, um, the book of Matthew, sorry. And now we're starting in the book of Luke, right? So we will do Zachariah this time. Um, but the next lesson, we'll probably do his wife, Elizabeth. So starting from verse 5 in Luke chapter 1. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, God remembers, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. 
and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they were both now well stricken in years, right? So they were faithful, they were old. Um, so we could definitely assume Elizabeth was um, into her menopausal age, right? Um, so these people could have been 50 plus, 60 plus, 70 plus, we're not sure, right? But if we want to be conservative, we could probably put them in their 60s. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, meaning his particular group was chosen to do duties at this particular point in time. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of God, right? So his group was chosen or it was the appointed time and when the lot was cast, it fell upon him to have the honor of burning incense before the Lord in the temple. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. So there were people outside, a large group of people outside the temple who were praying while Zachariah would have gone in to burn incense. And while there, um, in the temple, an angel appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and you shall call his name John, and you shall have joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias or Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, Zachariah, just as with the wise men, would have known that these were words concerning the coming Messiah, right? He shall go before him, talking about the son he would have. Go before who? Obviously, he's talking about the, prof the, the promised Messiah, right? Because this is a promise that they were all looking forward to. So Zacharias understood the implications of this. Now, here's what Zacharias' response was. So he's now saying to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And this, again, a very practical response. Just as Joseph gave a very logical and practical response when he found out that his virgin wife, that he was or his virgin fiancé, was now pregnant, right? So Zacharias, he looked at his natural situation. He thought to himself, I am an old man. My wife is old as well. We have been trying for decades. We have been unsuccessful. My wife is past the years of childbearing. In my own body, I myself probably have um, neither the desire nor the will anymore to even try. So he wants to know, how could this be taken into consideration our physical and our natural circumstances? But the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel. So now the angel is identifying himself by name, which really happens in scripture, that stand in the presence of God. So he's not just identifying himself with name, he's also given his status, his position. Right? 
and I'm sent to speak to thee. So basically, he is saying, listen, I am an important angel, an angel of, of position who is in the presence of God. And I was sent from where I was to come to speak to you and to show you or to give you these glad tidings. In other words, God sent me to give you good news, right? But your response is to ask me how this could happen. So he goes on further to say, and behold, you shall be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because you did not believe my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So I doubt very much that Gabriel would have said this in a, you know, very pleasant, cordial sort of way. He probably put on a very stern and serious voice when he said this, right? I am an angel who stands in the presence of God. I came to give you good news. You have been praying for this for all these years. I am telling you that your prayers are heard and you are going to get the answer. And your response to me is one of doubt. So whereas Zachariah, on a human level, it is easy for us to understand why he gave that response. But from the perspective of the angel, that is dotishness. That doesn't line up or add up with them because they know who is the one um, speaking and the power that is doing, right? So the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he stayed so long in the temple because obviously this was a routine and you could expect you, everybody knew what the priests would do right? Um, so they could more or less time it. So now they're wondering, but why he in there so long? And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speech speechless. Now, how can you prove somebody cannot talk? Hmm? Um, what medical tests could they have run to validate this, to say, yeah, but this man really can't talk anymore, right? Um, they would just have to take it for granted that he was being honest and he himself, how oh, he's going to prove to these people what happened to him, right? But suffice it to say, they came to the conclusion something had happened. And because again, this is a man, he is a big man, he has sense, he would have been able to probably write and communicate to them what happened. And it came to pass that as soon as his ministration were the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. So for that eight days where he was, um, his group was called upon, it was their time to go to the temple to do all the different duties. When those days were up, he went home. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. Now, this was not like in the case of Mary. So he and his wife would have had to take him, would have had to take the words of the angel by faith and do the necessary, take action to see this thing or to see if this was truth or if he was just being delusional, right? But she conceived, and it says, she hid herself five months, saying, the Lord has dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Because for a woman in these days, just as today, it is very difficult when a woman is not able to have children. But we're not focusing on Elizabeth, so I'm not going to stay there um, for too long. Now, Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered. And she had a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy on her. And they rejoiced, right? So now we have the physical proof. Listen, my husband, he went in the temple to burn incense. He get a vision. An angel talked to him and tell him, we're going to make a child. What rubbish you talking Anyway, you all, he all, you telling me all you're going and have children? Well, look, look the child now, right? So here was validation or proof for what was said. 
And it came to pass on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child as was their custom. And they called him Zacharias. They named him after his father. And his mother said, no, he shall be called John. And they said to her, there is none of our family by that name or our close relatives. And they made signs to his father how he would have called him. In other words, they asked the father, what you think, what we should call him? And he asked for a writing table. You could say he called for a tablet. And he wrote saying, his name is John. And they marveled. And his mouth was opened immediately. And his tongue loosed. And he spoke and praised God. So now... He himself is having another personal experience, a personal witness for what happened. The angel had already told him, you will not be able to speak because that same mouth, instead of you just said thanks and give God praise, you use those words and that mouth of yours to doubt. So until my words, the word of the Lord given to me concerning you comes to pass, you will not be able to speak. Now, on the day of the circumcision, when he is to name the child officially, he obeys, he calls him John, and he can now speak once more. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. Why were they afraid? Because these were some extraordinary circumstances. Remember, this was not just one or a one-off situation right? This was a pattern that was occurring around this couple. Lots of strange things were happening to these people, and the folks that knew them were witness to these things. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. What are they saying? People talk. So things was happening, People see, and the people who saw, the people who witnessed, went and tell other people, who went and tell other people, so the news started to spread. And they, they that heard laid them up in their hearts, saying, what manner of child shall this be? So when they heard the circumstances surrounding the birth, they themselves wondered, hmm, who this child, who is this child going to be in the future? And his father, Zachariah was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. And we will not go into the actual prophecy just yet. But what we will do is we will ask the question again, why did Zacharias believe, right? Point one, he had a divine encounter. An angel who identified himself by name as the angel Gabriel appeared to him spoke to him. He doubted. The angel now spoke to him again and told him, because of this doubt, you will not be able to speak, right? So he was given a prophetic word that came to pass on different levels. What were the different levels? Number one, he became instantly dumb because that's what the angel said. You wouldn't speak until these things come to pass. However, he went home after his duties were finished and soon after, his wife became pregnant. So now the prophetic word is coming to pass again on a second level. Elizabeth has now conceived. Nine months later, Elizabeth is now given birth. So again, not only did she conceive, she has gone full term. And now they have a happy, healthy baby boy. Right? And they were told they would have a son. Now, finally, he... It is time to name that child. And as he names the child and calls him John, he is now able to speak again. So the prophetic word that was spoken is now complete on another level. He received an answer to prayer. Again, they would have been praying for a child as most married couples will desire. And if they can't have one, they will try to have one through medical interventions um they will seek prayer for those who believe in such things right so he received an answer to prayer what else there was a there were witnesses to the peculiar events now granted there was not a direct witness when he received the vision itself however people will witness 
to the things that happened subsequent to that. And he would have shared what happened and the people now would have also been witness to these things coming to pass. Similar events happened to others he interacted with. As we saw with um, Joseph and when we actually get to Mary, we'll see even more how, you know, connected these two stories are. He received a vision from an angel who identified himself as Gabriel. Mary, a few months after, would also receive a vision by the same angel, right? Because he would identify himself by name again. Again, it has to do with um, a, a birth that would take place under supernatural, um, extraordinary circumstances. What happened to him had a foundation in scripture. Words concerning these things had already been written many centuries before um, Zachariah actually lived, right? So there, were a found, there was a foundation already there in scripture. And what is happening to him is a continuation of that foundation. Finally, he himself was inspired to make prophetic declarations that time would validate. Because how do we validate prophecy? Only time can do that. Certain prophecies in the Bible took thousands of years to manifest from the time in which they were given, right? Some took hundreds of years. Um, he was able to say some things that could have been validated within the space of a generation, right? Within 40 years. So these are some of the reasons why Zachariah believed. And finally, let's just close off the chapter and look at the, the prophecy that he would have now given when he was able to speak. Let me just go back. Right, so look at verse 7 again. It says, his father, Zachariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. Now, I believe personally, the highest experience, the highest level experience a person can have is a spiritual experience, right? So I cannot doubt the multitude of people who would have been either fathers or mothers of different religious beliefs who say they had a spiritual experience. I cannot doubt they received a spiritual experience or people all over the world from all faiths, from all backgrounds, all philosophies are uh, receiving spiritual experiences. However, what we do believe is that there's a difference between the spirit of God and other spirits because there is God his spirit and the spiritual agents that work for him. And then there is a next set of spirits, right? So Zachariah was filled with the Holy Ghost or the spirit of God himself. And he said, blessed be the Lord of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people again. This concerns the Messiah and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. Now, wait a minute. Zachariah was not from the lineage of David. His wife wasn't from the lineage of David. His son, that is now, that is, has just been circumcised, or is about to be circumcised, is not from the tribe of David. So who is he speaking to? Zachariah is not speaking about his son. He's actually speaking about a son who will be born that is not even conceived as yet, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet. So now he's confirming that this son who is to be born is the same one who the prophets of all time spoke about, which have been since the world began. So you see how far back we could trace the prophetic record that we should be saved from our enemies. Now this probably, it is, you know, Coming now a little back to speak specifically to the covenanted people, the nation that God himself um, built, right? And from all and from the hand of all that hate us. Now, this would have been very significant to them who living at that time. 
because they were under Roman rule, right? Roman oppression, and they wanted freedom from that. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, right? Um, and we would be talking about covenant in different lessons. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. So again, this is part of a continuum, right? That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. What was the whole point? Or what is the whole point of the Savior coming? So that we, the people, human beings, would have the opportunity to serve God in spirit and in truth, as Jesus himself would say later on in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, now he is specifically speaking to his son, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For you shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. So now he's recognizing that his child is going to be anointed to be the forerunner of the Messiah to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Very specific. This is why John came baptizing for the remission of sins. And we would see when we get to him that people even ask the question, well, why are you baptizing if you are not the promised Messiah? Right? 78. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So Zachariah, the priest, the old priest who has now had his prayers answered, he has had a you know, tremendous divine encounters. He's now prophesying for something that is of utmost significance and importance to not only the Jewish people. Because when we talk, when he we look at 73 and he talks about the oath he swear to our father Abraham, that was not just a promise for the Jewish people or the, the nation of Israel alone. Because one of the things the promise says is that in your seed, all the nations of the world or of the earth will be blessed. So this Messiah was not just coming for one nation only. He was coming to be that sin offering for all mankind, right? And Zachariah has received a son of a miraculous nature who is going to be forerunner for this. So the people now who heard all of this, more so they would have been looking at this child and telling stories about this child so that when John finally came out in his public ministry, people would have remembered, hey, remember a long time ago, right? Um, all these words that were spoken concerning this child or this person, let us see what is going to happen from here. So Zachariah had his reasons for believing. So this was um, another why did they believe lesson. The focus was on Zachariah. Once again, we will continue to say that belief is a personal experience. Salvation is a personal experience. I have my reasons. Um, the people we would explore in this series, they would have their reasons. You also would have yours. Everything you believe, there's a reason for it. Um, we are challenging you now to look into the biblical account of Jesus Christ and see if it is that you also are moved to hold these teachings as truth. Right, that he was indeed um, born in a miraculous way. He did indeed die and, and he resurrected or was resurrected. He is Messiah. He is also Son of God, right? Who now opens the way for us to enter into the kingdom of God um, and to be filled and to receive the Holy Ghost and the, the person of God living in us. So thank you for 
spending this time with us. And we look forward to sharing more with you. Um, Bible shorts, action word. All right. Blessings to you. Blessings to your family. And continue seeking and pursuing truth. Continue to grow in grace and understanding. Bless week.